The Lord be with you. Thank you for joining us here for our Palm Sunday worship service. It's supposed to be chaotic. This is when Jesus enters Jerusalem. It's a cause for celebration, and so we all need palms. If you don't have a palm yet, there's a whole bunch on the table as we process in this morning. Before we process in, though, we do have some liturgy. We have bulletins, and we have a copy, a little book that we'll be reading from. Our first song is actually in this book. As we process in here in a moment, we're going to sing all glory, laud, and honor. Um, when we go in, we'll go to the front, right in front of the table, the altar in front, and then process in through the center if possible. There's a lot of people in there. I hope there's enough seats. I think there's enough seats. Um, if not, we'll, we'll find out some way to make sure everybody is comfortable. Please follow along with me in our bulletin. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. A reading from the Gospel of Mark. When they were approaching Jerusalem at Bethphage and Bethany, near the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately as you enter it, you will find there a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it. If anyone says to you, Why are you doing this? Just say, the Lord needs it, and will send it back here immediately. They went away and found a colt tied near a door outside in the street. As they were untying it, some of the bystanders said to them, What are you doing untying the colt? They told them that Jesus had said, and they allowed them to take it. Then they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks on it, and he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, and others spread leafy branches that they had cut in the fields. Then those who went ahead and those who followed were shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our ancestor David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Then he entered Jerusalem and went into the temple. And when he had looked around at everything as it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. We praise you, O God, for redeeming the world through our Savior, Jesus Christ. Today he entered the holy city in triumph and was proclaimed Messiah and King by those who spread garments and branches along his way. Bless these branches and those who carry them. Grant us grace to follow our Lord in the way of the cross, so that joined to his death and resurrection, we enter into life with you. Through the same Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us go forth in peace. In the name of Christ, amen. Please join me in singing our gathering hymn.
the triumphal entry of Jesus Christ into Jerusalem is a moment of celebration and joy. And so I thank you all for humoring me and helping to participate in bringing the wonderful joy of Jesus Christ into this sanctuary this morning. I know it's a little confusing. I heard that we're out of the little bulletins. You're going to need one of these. So if you don't have one um, and you see somebody next to you has more than one, if we can share, I, I'm sure that the Holy Spirit will work wonders in making sure everybody has the opportunity to see. Does anybody, we, you have parts, so you're going to need one of these here in just a moment. I'm sorry that we've run out, but I'm also glad that we have such a wonderful turnout that we have run out. Awesome. Just sharing and generosity is inspiring. Thank you all for, for uh, helping. Uh, just a couple announcements before, uh, for us before we begin. Uh, this last week, um, our family was so privileged to receive so many gifts and welcome presents that we went out and used some of our, our uh, gift cards uh, to local communities, to the local businesses. We went over to Neem's Flower Shop, I think that's how you pronounce it, and bought a flower back here. It's a small one, but it, it's for our celebration for Easter next week. As a congregation, we're hoping that you uh, can bring a flower from your home or plant from your home. It can be clippings uh, that are in a vase, or it can be a potted plant. There's a sign up in the narthex uh, near the door, near the, the prayer shawls, uh, if you are, uh, would like to participate in that. But it would be wonderful for us to have our uh, chancel up here just filled with flowers to celebrate the resurrection. Uh, we do have, I'll mention it during uh, a children's sermon today. We'll have a children's sermon following our long gospel reading. Um, so kids, uh, I hope you come up and, and participate. It'll be fun. I promise I don't bite. I promise I'm nice. Uh, and uh, it's, it's, it's Palm Sunday, so we have an Easter egg hunt coming. Um, we'll have lots of fun today. During, the Wednesday, or during Thursday evening, it's Monday, Thursday, and I was told that, though it hasn't happened in many years, the congregation has participated in foot washing. Have you ever participated in foot washing on Monday, Thursday? Raise your hand if you have. So there's a few. Um, foot washing is like it says, it's foot washing. So as, as your pastor, um, I will wash feet. Um, Jesus washed his disciples' feet. We are to wash each other's feet. Jesus has been an example to us, and so we do the same for each other. So I hope you'll join us on Thursday evening at 6.30 for Monday, uh, Monday, Thursday service. You do not have to have your feet washed. Um, but if I would hope that we would have a few um, that are open enough to the Holy Spirit and, uh, and willing to be vulnerable um, in this place. Uh, you can prepare, you can wear sandals, um, you can you know, manicure your toes or pedicure, pedicure your toes if you'd like. But it is not necessary. Um, if, if you have wool on your toes from your socks, it would not stop me because it, it would not stop Jesus from are, serving are you. Are you offering pedicures? I am not offering <laughs> pedicures. We, we, we could try, but it's going to look like a three-year-old did it. So, uh, <clears throat> I invite you to rise. Please join me in the prayer of the day. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Everlasting God, in your endless love for the human race, you sent our Lord Jesus Christ to take our nature and to suffer death on the cross. In your obedience to your will, and in the victorious victory of his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. 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 Be seated. We'll be following, 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 following along in, 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 in. Mine's high, mine's high, mine's high, mine's high. But your, 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 uh, there, uh, there, uh, there, uh, and, 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 and them. That means that as the congregation, that's your part. We're going to look at and read and, uh, and uh, write along with the Gospel of Mark, the Passion Story. So it'll take a little longer than normal. I won't have you stand for the whole Gospel reading today. Uh, following, we'll have that, the children's sermon. 
Um, Tyler's handing out some microphones to some key parts. Uh, Terry, if you'd like to come forward. Terry has graciously uh, offered to uh, play the part of Jesus for us this morning. Thank you so much. Again, follow along. It starts on page five in your bulletin. The Passion of Our Lord Jesus Christ According to Mark. It was two days before the Passover and the festival of unleavened bread. The chief priests and the scribes were looking for a way to arrest Jesus by stealth and kill him. For they said, that's your part, not dirt, the whole congregation, okay? You have a different one? Oh, that's a big problem. <laughs> I only have one version. I need a Luke version. We need a Luke version. Wow. <laughs> All right, we're going to try this again. You had me going. Right? <laughs> All right, so the first words were wrong. The first words, according to Luke. The passion of our Lord, Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Now the festival of unleavened bread, which is called the Passover, was near. The chief priests and the scribes were looking for a way to put Jesus to death, for they were afraid of the people. Then Satan entered into Judas, called Iscariot, who was one of the twelve. He went away and conferred with the chief priests and officers of the temple police about how they might betray Jesus to them. They were greatly pleased and agreed to give him money. So he consented and began to look for an opportunity to betray him to them when no crowd was present. Then came the day of unleavened bread, on which the Passover lamb had to be sacrificed. So Jesus sent Peter and John, saying, Go and prepare the Passover meal for us, that we may eat it. They asked him, Where, where do you want us to make preparations? For it. Listen, when you have entered the city, a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him into the house he enters and say to the owner of the house, the teacher asks you, where is the guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? He will show you a large room upstairs, already furnished. Make preparation for us there. So they went and found everything as he had told them, and they prepared the Passover meal. When the hour came, he took his place at the table and the apostles with him. He said to them, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will not eat it until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. Then he took a cup and after giving thanks, he said, Take this and divide it among yourselves. For I tell you that from now on, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. Then he took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to them, saying, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And he did the same with the cup after supper, saying, This cup that is poured out for you is the new covenant in my blood. But see, the one who betrays me is with me, and his hands are on the table. For the Son of Man is going as it has been determined. But woe to that one by whom he is betrayed. Then they began to ask one another, which one of them it could be who would do this? A dispute also arose among them as to which one of them was going to be regarded as the greatest. But he said to them, The kings of the Gentiles lord it over them, and those in authority over them are called benefactors. But not so with you. Rather, the greatest among you must become like the youngest, and the leader like one who serves. For who is greater, the one who is at the table or the one who serves? Is it not the one at the table? But I'm among you as one who serves. You are those who have stood by me in my trials, and I confer on you, just as my Father has conferred on me, a kingdom, so that you may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom and you will sit on the thrones judging the 12 tribes of Israel. Simon, Simon, listen. Satan has demanded to sift all of you like wheat. 
but I betrayed, I prayed for you that your own faith may not fail. And you, when once you have turned back, strengthen your brothers. And Peter said to him, Lord, I am ready to go with you to prison and to death. Jesus said, I tell you, Peter, the cock will not crow this day until you have denied three times that you know me. He said to them, When I sent you out without a purse, bag, or sandals, did you lack anything? They said, No, not a thing. He said to them, But now the one who has a purse must take it, and likewise a bag. And the one who has no sword must sell his cloak and buy one. For I tell you, this scripture must be fulfilled in me. And he was counted among the lawless. And indeed, what is written about me is being fulfilled. They said, He replied, It is enough. He came out and went, as was his custom, to the Mount of Olives. And the disciples followed him. When he reached the place, he said to them, Pray that you may not come into the time of trial. Then he withdrew from them about a stone's throw, knelt down and prayed. Father, if you are willing, remove this cup from me. Yet not my will, but yours be done. Then an angel from heaven appeared to him and gave him strength. In his anguish, he prayed more earnestly, and his sweat became like great drops of blood falling down on the ground. When he got up from prayer, he came to the disciples and found them sleeping because of grief. And he said to them, Why are you sleeping? Get up and pray that you may not come into the time of trial. While he was still speaking, suddenly a crowd came, and the one called Judas, one of the twelve, was leading them. He approached Jesus to kiss him, but Jesus said to him, Judas, is it with a kiss that you are betraying the Son of Man? When those who were around him saw what was coming, they asked, Lord, should we strike you with the sword? Then one of them struck the slave of the high priest and cut off his right ear. But Jesus said, No more of this. And he touched his ear and healed him. Then Jesus said to the chief priests, the officers of the temple police, and the elders who had come for him, Have you come out with swords and clubs as if I were a bandit? When I was with you day after day in the temple, you did not lay hands on me. But this is your hour and the power of darkness. Then they seized him and led him away, bringing him into the high priest's house. But Peter was following at a distance. When they had kindled a fire in the middle of the courtyard and sat down together, Peter sat among them. Then a servant girl, seeing him in the firelight, stared at him and said, This man also was with us. But he denied it, saying, Woman, I do not know him. A little later, someone else on seeing him said, You also are one of them. But Peter said, Man, I am not. Then about an hour later, another kept insisting. Surely this man also was with him, for he is a Galilean. But Peter said, Man, I do not know what you are talking about. At that moment, while he was still speaking, the cock crowed. The Lord turned and looked at Peter. Then Peter remembered the word of the Lord, how he had said to him, Before the, croc before the cock crows today, you will deny me three times. And he went out and wept bitterly. Now the men who were holding Jesus began to mock him and beat him. They also blindfolded him and kept asking him, They kept heaping many other insults on him. When day came, the assembly of the elders of the people, both chief priests and scribes, gathered together, and they brought him to their council. They said, If you are the Messiah, tell us. He replied, If I tell you, you will not believe. And if I question you, you will not answer. But from now on, the Son of Man will be seated at the right hand of the power of God. All of them asked, Are you the Son of God? He said to them, You say that I am. 
Then they said, Then the assembly rose as a body and brought Jesus before Pilate. They began to accuse him, saying, Then Pilate asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? He answered, You say so. Then Pilate said to the chief priests and the crowds, I found no basis for an accusation against this man. But they were insistent and said, When Pilate heard this, he asked whether the man was a Galilean. And when he learned that he was under Herod's jurisdiction, he sent him off to Herod, who was himself in Jerusalem at that time. When Herod saw Jesus, he was very glad, for he had been wanting to see him for a long time, because he had heard about him and was hoping to see him perform some sign. He questioned him at some length, but Jesus gave him no answer. The chief priests and the scribes stood by, vehemently accusing him. Even Herod with his soldiers treated him with contempt and mocked him. Then he put an elegant robe on him and sent Jesus back to Pilate. The same day, Herod and Pilate became friends with each other. Before this, they had become enemies. Pilate then called together the chief priests, the elders, and the people, and said to them, You brought this man as one who was perverting the people, and here I have examined him in your presence, and have not found this man guilty of any of your charges against him, neither has Herod. For he sent him back to us. Indeed, he has done nothing to deserve death. I will therefore have him flogged and release him. Then they all shouted out together. This was a man who had been put into prison for an insurrection that had taken place in the city and for murder. Pilate, wanting to release Jesus, addressed them again, but they kept shouting. A third time, Pilate said to them, Why? What evil has he done? I have found in him no ground for the sentence of death. I will therefore have him flogged and then release him. But they kept urgently demanding with loud shouts that he should be crucified, and their voices prevailed. So Pilate gave his verdict that their demand should be granted. He released the man they asked for, the one who had been put into prison for insurrection and murder, And he handed Jesus over as they wished. As they led him away, they seized a man, Simon of Cyrene, who was coming from the country. And they laid the cross on him and made him carry it behind Jesus. A great number of people followed him. And among them were women who were beating their breasts and wailing for him. But Jesus turned and said to them, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children. For the day are surely coming when they will say, Blessed are the barren, and the wombs that never bore, and the breasts that never nursed. Then they will begin to say to the mountains, Fall on us, and to the hills, cover us. For if they do this when the wood is green, what will happen when it is dry? Two others also, who were criminals, were led away to be put to death with him. When they came to the place that is called the skull, They crucified Jesus there with the criminals, one on his right and one on his left. Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And they cast lots to divide his clothing. And the people stood by watching, but the leaders scoffed at him, saying, The soldiers also mocked him, coming up and offering him sour wine and saying, If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. There was also an inscription over him, This is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals who were hanging there kept deriding him and saying, Are you not the Messiah? Save yourself and us. But the other rebuked him, saying,
Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus replied, Truly I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. It was now about noon, and darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. When the sun's light failed, and the temple, the curtain of the temple was torn in two, the Jesus, crying with a loud voice, said, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. Having said this, he breathed his last. When the centurion saw what had taken place, he praised God and said, And when all the crowds who had gathered there for the spectacle saw what had taken place, they returned home, beating their breasts. But all his acquaintances, including the women who had followed him from Galilee, stood at a distance, watching these things. Now there was a good and righteous man named Joseph, who, though a member of the council, had not agreed to their plan and action. He came from the Jewish town of Arimathea, and he was waiting expectantly for the kingdom of God. This man went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then he took it down, wrapped it in a linen cloth, and laid it in a rock-hewn tomb where no one had ever been laid. It was the day of preparation, and the Sabbath was beginning. The women who had come with him from Galilee followed, and they saw the tomb and how his body was laid. Then they returned and prepared spices and ointments. On the Sabbath, they rested according to the commandment. I invite the children forward for the children's sermon this morning. Come on forward, everybody. Let's see how many kids we got here today. Thank you for leading, Jack. You all, feel free, you can sit, actually let's sit right up here, like if I was reading a book in school, if you all sit in front, sit cross legs, so you don't kick each other. You don't have to come up, I promise. <laughs> and next time, if you decide that you do, you can come up then. If you want to bring your parent, that's okay. If you're young at heart and just feel like a kid today, that's fine too. Oh. Has anybody ever heard that story before that we read? You've heard it before? You've all heard parts of it, but you might not have heard the whole story like we heard today. It's kind of a hard part. Yeah, you've heard it, Gavin? You heard all of it, and you've heard it quite a few times? Yeah, that's good. We're in church, and so this is the story that everything is based around. I had a different version than you today, didn't I? That wasn't planned. <laughs> but you know what? The idea that we all thought was supposed to happen this week, we thought it was supposed to go to plan, and God had a different plan than what we thought God was going to do. Everything's kind of chaotic this week. When we came in this morning with the, with the palms, it was kind of crazy, right? People didn't know where to go, what to do. That's what was happening to Jesus when he was entering Jerusalem like 2,000 years ago. He came in and everybody's celebrating and having fun that they're together, but they don't know at that time what's going to happen that week. So I have, I found something, and I thought that you all might be able to help me. I found two things in the parking lot this week. This is one of them. What is this? What, what is it? Mobile mash? Marble mash. It, it's a fidget? All right. So it's a marble inside of a little mesh thing. This counts as a toy nowadays. Um, it's a good thing that it's not on, online, though. It gives you something to actually touch. So I found this, and I found this little bracelet that says 
Brooke with an E. Is any, are any of you Brooke? Did anybody lose this? <laughs> Does anybody know if anybody lost this? You might know who it is. One of your students' names is Brooke. I found it uh, Thursday morning. So is she here Wednesday night? Oh, will you make sure she gets that? Thank you. <laughs> you uh, yeah, you have to give them back. Yeah. <laughs> oh, marble mash. I didn't. I know you have one, but I didn't know what it was called. You have one too. You have some. You've seen them before. Yeah. So this week, there's going to be a lot of things. If you come to church on Thursday and Friday and next Sunday for Easter, there's going to be a lot of things that you normally don't see. Things are kind of out of place. Things are kind of wacky. And that's because God's plan for the world and for us is always a little different than what we plan on. So I wanted to ask you this morning, I'll point out a few things, but what's something in the sanctuary that's not usually here that you see? This stuff I'm going to talk about down here. But what else is, is not typically here? Yeah. The plant is new. Yep, I brought that from, from home yeah. for Easter. In, in this, yep. I'm gonna, the, well, the palm branch, for sure. This is from the day. We usually don't have these, do we? No. no. But we'll talk about those, I promise. What else? Jack? The pretty flowers. We sometimes have flowers. Well, those are, those are special newer, newer flowers. What else? The cross. That's the one I was looking for, the big cross. We always have this one up here. The fancy one that talks about resurrection. That means the colors show that Jesus is risen, everything is good. This one reminds us that Jesus went through something very hard for us to come celebrate what that cross means. And so during this week, we're going to talk about a lot about what that cross means over there. There's even nails in here. At one point, somebody who had a, probably a worship service where they gave everybody an opportunity to nail their own cross into that. Would you like to nail a cross into that if Jesus was on it? You wouldn't, would you? And so it hurts us to realize that we're the ones that crucified Jesus. When God came to earth, because Jesus is God, he's one of the three in the Trinity, right? The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. When Jesus came, we said, God, we don't want none of you. We have our own plans. We want it to go according to our rules. And so we killed Jesus, and we said we don't want any of this. It's a sad story, isn't it? The good thing is God never gave up on us, and God came back in three days, right? Yes. Uh, uh, he didn't really die anymore. He did really die for three whole days. He came back to life. Yes, he did come back to life after those three days. And so that first day um, is Good Friday. And so one of the things that you're going to see this week is this pokey crown. This is like a king's crown. And they put it on Jesus' head. I'm not even going to put it on my head. It'll poke me too much. They put it on his head to say, Oh, hail Jesus, isn't he wonderful? They were teasing him. They were mocking him because they didn't like what he was teaching them. That's sad, isn't it? We're going to hear that story on Good Friday. And we're going to talk about why we would call such a sad day Good Friday. Okay? Okay? And then, the day before, on Monday, Thursday, I found a bowl. I don't know where the bowl, what its real purpose is, but I'm going to repurpose it. And I'm going to fill it with water, and I'm going to put it here on the floor, and I'm going to put a chair there, and I'm going to invite people to come up and put their feet in it. And I'm going to wash their feet and pat them dry, and then they can go sit back down. Why do we do this? Why would I do such a silly thing that never happens any other day in the church? Why? Because you're exactly right. Because Jesus did that. Jesus challenges us in our lives to do things for others that we might not like doing necessarily. We love each other like Jesus loved us. And Jesus gives us that new command on Monday, Thursday. That Monday really kind of means command Thursday. What's the command that Jesus gives us? What are we supposed to do? It is cold. I'll make warm water in here, hopefully. What does Jesus command us to do? To be nice. To love each other is what he says. And that means to be nice, right? Do you think that he says, just be nice to the people that you like? No. 
No, he doesn't. He says be nice to everybody. As a matter of fact, in the gospel today, when Jesus is on the cross, when those people were teasing him, when they were being mean to him, what did he do for them? You're right. He does try to make the world be a better place. And the way he does that is he prays to God. He prays to the Father, and he says, Lord, please forgive them, for they don't know what they're doing. Jesus, even when people were being mean to him, he was nice to them. Have you ever been nice to somebody when they were mean to you? It's hard, isn't it? It's like super hard to do, and yet Jesus showed us that you can. Yes, Gavin? If someone's mean to you, you want to be mean to them, but Jesus says in his example today, he says don't. There's a better way you be nice to them and love them and care for them because, believe it or not, we are the ones who cry out, crucify him. You heard everybody say that today, right? We, we're the ones who do that in our daily lives. When we tell Jesus, Jesus, I don't want to be nice to the mean person, we say, Jesus, I don't want to listen to you. I don't want to use your cross as an example. That would be wrong, wouldn't it? Yeah. This world's hard. It's really hard to be nice to people that are mean to us. But Jesus shows us that we do it. Today, one of the Jesus followers cut the ear off of somebody. How did Jesus respond? Did he say, you deserve to have your ear cut off? Or did he heal the person and make him well again? Yes, which one, Bennett? He healed them. Over and over and over again in our story today, Jesus teaches us to be nice to even those that are mean to us. Yeah? Yes. Yeah, we, we want to be nice. Even if people are mean, mean we're supposed to be the nice ones. Because Jesus was, right? Yeah. And as his followers, we follow what Jesus would do. <laughs> yeah, we want to be nice to people. We want, if somebody d doesn't want to play with us, that's okay. But we want to play with other people. We want to show the world the better example. That's what this whole week's about in the church. That's what our whole faith is about, is that life is hard, and we can still be good people in it because Jesus equips us to be those good people. Yes, last question. Yeah, even be nice to people that don't want to be your friend. That's hard, isn't it? We all know that. Every one of us. But you know what? The Holy Spirit, Jesus, Jesus' Spirit himself, is inside of you. And when you were baptized with this water, that's when we're sure that that happened. So inside of you is Jesus. The part of you that says, no, Jesus, I don't want to do that, there is that little part in you now that says, but I know what I'm supposed to do. I'm supposed to love them. Jesus talks to us from the inside now. Not just the outside, but he's inside of us now. Will you pray with me? Let's cross our fingers, close our eyes. Jesus, we thank you for your cross and everything you went through for us. We're sorry that you had to die. We're sorry that that's what we chose for you. We thank you that you're nicer than us, that you love us no matter what mistakes we make. Help us on this side of the resurrection where we know you're alive in us to be like you, to follow your example, to love and to be nice to all people, especially those who are mean to us. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, everybody. You can go back to your seats. Don't forget there's an Easter egg hunt after brunch today, too, okay? You found an Easter egg already? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Congregation, I invite you to rise as we sing our hymn of the day. Hymn number 324, In the Cross of Christ I Glory.
joy when the sun of bliss is beaming light and love and fear away on the cross the radiant streaming as one lost to the day Together with the whole church, we profess our faith through the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated for the prayers. Drawn close to the heart of God, we offer these prayers for the church, the world, and all who are in need. We pray for the church, called to follow Jesus in the way of the cross. Make us unflinching servants of the gospel. Deliver us from hardship as we confront the forces of injustice and practice radical compassion. Merciful God, receive our prayer. For the earth and all its inhabitants, created in love, train us to recognize your divine goodness in the world around us. Rouse us in a reverence for creation, that we take great care for its resources. Merciful God, receive our prayer. For those in positions of authority called to lead with integrity and compassion, Supply them with courage and vulnerability when challenged with new ideas. Deliver them from fear that limits imagination and impedes justice. Merciful God, hear our prayer. For those who suffer, waiting expectantly for mercy and consolation, accompany those who feel abandoned or betrayed. Defend those who are wrongly accused and embrace those who are incarcerated or detained. Heal those who are ill, especially Beth, Paul, Lyle, Ron, Paul, Daryl, Judy, Larry, <coughs> Joe, Judy, Juanita, Gerald, and all those who we name in our hearts. Merciful God, receive our prayer. For Christians around the world, preparing this week to journey with Jesus to the cross. Reveal to us once again the earth-shaking power of humble service, unmerited forgiveness, and sacrificial love. Lead us all from death to life. Merciful God, receive our prayer. We remember those who have died, who are commended into your hands. Remember us when you come into your kingdom and prepare a place for each of us with you in paradise. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Accept the prayers we bring, O God, on behalf of a world in need for the sake of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Please rise.
The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. To share a sign of peace with those around you. We continue with our offering. We pray. Extravagant God, you have blessed us with the fullness of creation. Now we gather at your feast, where you offer us the food that satisfies. Take and use what we offer here. Come among us and feed us with the body and blood of Jesus, in whose name we pray. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. 
It is indeed right, our duty and our joy to glorify you, almighty and merciful God, to give you thanks for you alone, our God, living and true. Fountain of all life and source of all goodness, you made all things and filled them with your blessing. You created them to rejoice in the splendor of your radiance. Countless throngs of angels stand before you day and night, and beholding the glory of your presence, they offer you an unceasing praise, joining with them and giving voice to every creature under heaven. We praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy, mighty, and merciful Lord, heaven and earth are full of your glory. In great love you sent to us Jesus, your Son, who reached out to heal the sick and suffering, who preached good news to the poor, and who on the cross opened his arms to all. In the night in which he was handed over, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his death, resurrection, and ascension, we await his coming in glory. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite the wills of all who share this heavenly food, the body and blood of Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory now and forever. Amen. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Here is food and drink for the journey. Take and be filled. Please be seated.
blessed Jesus, in this rich meal of grace, you have fed us with your body, the bread of life. Now send us forth to bear your life, giving hope to a world in need. Amen. Please rise. You are children of God, anointed with the oil of gladness and strengthened for the journey. Almighty God, motherly, majestic, and mighty, bless you this day and always. Amen. Amen. Please join me in singing our sending hymn, 351, O Sacred Head Now Wounded, hymn 351. Please join me in prayer for our brunch this morning. God, we thank you for this Palm Sunday, for the joyous arrival of so many people raising palms, and the confusion of your joyful entry into Jerusalem. We ask as you send us now to continue this joy in your resurrection life. May your peace and comfort and mutual consolation join us in our brunch. We thank you for those who have prepared it, those who have followed your example and offered their time and their care to serve us. Bless us in this meal as we go forth today to be your people in a world that needs your love. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Go in peace. Jesus meets you on the way. Thanks be to God.